And you got to realize the Hammond Ranch is in a place called the Dust Bowl. The lava ran around this area and it's blue full of sand and it, it raises alfalfa like you can't believe. As soon as you drive into the Dust Bowl from the reservoir up above, because it's all gravity feed sprinklers, here's monster bucks standing around everywhere, antelope with prongs on them that long, sagey, Hungarian partridge, chuckers, geese, ducks, and they're, you can see in the alfalfa fields that they're making headway, and you go, God, Dwight, why don't you run some of this stuff off? You know, they're cutting into your profit. Oh yeah, but they're kind of pretty. And they are. Why well, they accuse old Stevie of going up on the mountain and shooting deer. What? He could sit on his front porch and kill trophy deer every morning for breakfast. Sage grass, everything. I mean, it was all right there because all around it's desert. And here's this paradise for wildlife right there. That was crap. Everything they did was crap. You know why? Mr. Hammond, because of me, I used to rent pasture from him on the Steens Mountains, trail through all the time. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service let the Crumble Reservoir wash out. Everybody wants to know about the Hammonds, and they like to demonize them. They like to say things about the Hammonds that aren't true. Their ranch is completely surrounded with public ground, BLM and refuge ground. The Hammonds noticed that there were some water rights in their area that had not been claimed. So they went down and filed on those water rights. They received those water rights. When you have a right, you have to own it, use it, and defend it. And they filed for those water rights, and then the refuge, the Malheur Refuge, says, oh, wait a minute, we're using that water. And the Hammond said, no, we have, the, we have the water right now. It's ours. It's ours to develop. So they developed some water features, some places for their cattle to drink, and the refuge came in and put a fence around them with no gate. So the cattle were going to starve or die of thirst. We had the kids up at the Davis Springs, which is above the Crumble and feeds the Crumble Reservoir, catching fish. The kids, the Bascos are cooking up the fish. The kids are catching fish. You can catch them with your hands. <laughs> and I said, you know, Dwight, it looks like to me, we could run a ditch right across this pass right here. And you could put this Davis Springs in dry crumble and supplement your water. Well, you can't do that. They've got water right. And I said, water rights in the Great Basin, does the water doesn't run interstate. It stays right here. I'll bet you the refuge is under the same provisions as you and I are as far as adjudications of water, because it doesn't run interstate. Interstate Commerce Commission, nobody has any jurisdiction beyond the state engineer. So he and I got in his airplane, we went over to Idaho, and we talked to a water engineer, and he said, yeah, that's right. So we went and dug the ditch. See, it's my fault. I caused Hammond all of his trouble by planting the seed to put in that water in dry crumble. And so he was basically targeted. Oh, boy. That. Bullseye this big around on his back from that day on and that was well I was down here when it went before the state engineer and went up and testified that I trailed my sheep across dry crumble all the time and all the part of it that no longer existed because they let it wash out. So Dwight went there with an excavator and tore all that crap down. Well then he was you know causing problems with federal property you know the fence. They had no right to fence him out of his water. And they're down through the years, one thing after another, they just messed with them a lot. A lot.
take their grazing rights away from them on the mountain, you know, their grazing rights that were their rights. It's been messed with multiple times. And the uh, media tried saying that they were arsonists, but can you explain a little bit more about that? They're not arsonists. The, the, the Hammond family was accused of domestic terrorism. Yes. But you were there. Can you explain a little bit? Because I think they're trying to basically tarnish your reputation in case you ever go to court, you know? Okay, fine. I knew Hammond since the day I got back to Eastern Oregon out of college. Probably, I mean, Dwight was a truck driver. Susie and the kids ran the ranch while he was trying to make enough money to keep it together. She was the swashbuckler. She was the one that would go to a meeting with the Fish and Wildlife Service or the BLM, sit down and quote the scripture, the CFRs, Congressional Federal Rules, and break the meeting up, because she'd be right. They'd be trying to pull crap on them. She, she was the one. But anyhow, yeah, I went to Burns to pick up my daughter Son, daughter, <laughs> Racy. I met my daughter who lived in Klamath Falls in Burns, picked up Racy, and we headed south. And we had already called the Hammonds and said we were going to stop by and, and visit. So I had a mutiny. The kids wanted to go swimming up at the reservoir. We got to stay another day. Well, I'm always anxious to get back to the farm and, you know, make sure everything's cooking. So we stayed. The next day, we're up at the reservoir and we're swimming. The kids are in the reservoir swimming. I was fishing, just we're, we're sitting there drinking beer, talking about, you know, Hardy County and the people I knew and that he knew and everything. Lightning, lightning. Susie says, okay, kids, you know the rules. Three strikes, you're out. She no more said that, third strike. We're all standing after Susie made us all get out of the lake. We go back to the house and fortunately, the wife takes a picture of everybody standing in front of the piano. And on that piano is this clock that has the day, the time, and the weather. And there's a big old lightning strike on it. But you know, they couldn't find any lightning strikes in that area when they looked at their research, the records. Isn't that something? So, Anyhow, next morning I leave. I'm heading south, I go to French Glen. In French Glen they kind of got a BLM fire camp. And they got a chain across the driveway to go in there. It's still up. Everybody's still in the sack. Right behind the BLM office is Bridge Creek. And there's a fire. And it's boiling up. And the wind's starting to come out of the south. At that time, now maybe it's changed, but at that time in that pocket, your cell phone wouldn't work. I whipped up to the top of Pea Hill and got up in what they call the Hollywood field by Merrill Glenn's place uh, and made a phone call. Who'd I call? Susie. I said, you better get the boys out and get every gate open on that outfit. There's a huge fire in Bridge Creek and it's headed right straight north, right towards you. So, yeah, they found Stephen's footprints by gates up there in that fire. Well, no shit, Sherlock. What would you do if the, your cows were all about to burn up? Give them a chance to escape, wouldn't you? Duh. The whole time that I was a county fire chief, there were a few ranchers that would call me. Hardy County's a little over 10,000 square miles. There's a few ranchers that would call me if they were going to do a burn a burn for habitat or to clean up a fence or to clean up a ditch or something like that. They would call, I would ask them some questions to make sure that they were gonna do it safely and they would let us know when they were burning. So if we got a report that we knew it was something intentional. Steve Hammond was always on board with that, Dwight and Steve always on board they would always call say hey i want to burn this can i what you got blah 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 they never they always tried to get along always 
one of the things about fire, if a fire is coming towards you, one of the things you can do is you can run right up to the fire and get burned up or burn the, the material, the fuel in front of the fire so that when the fire gets there, it doesn't have anything to burn. There was a fire headed towards the Hammonds property. They set a back burn, which effectively stopped the fire, but part of it got on the other side of the fence, less than 140 acres burned, and they put it out themselves, but they were still charged with arson as terrorists and unjustly put in prison over it. I mean, everything about that was just a complete setup. After my testimony in Pendleton, I, I was told, hold no one way or the other, but that's what they told me. They, the jury let them go on all the charges, but there was a thing about domestic terrorism. It's 11 o'clock at night, and when you've got two or three lawyers charging a thousand bucks an hour or whatever they were charging, I'm sure it was over that, they pled guilty to domestic terrorism. And the judge even said it shocks the conscience and tried to set them free, and, and, they, and the BLM appealed it. I guess somebody did, but anyhow, they wound up in jail. And wasn't there a BLM firefighting camp right there doing nothing to stop the fire? Yeah, they didn't do anything to help the Hammonds. Well, it seems like if a wildfire is coming, the BLM would say, clear out, clear a grazing area, like, or clear an area so it doesn't spread further. Well, they weren't doing anything to help the Hammonds. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a marked man. Anytime... Anytime, you, you know, it used to be that uh, we had the First Amendment, you know, freedom of speech, all of those things. But boy, when you step up and say enough is enough, I was willing to stay hidden down here and, and mind my own business. And they come into my part in Black Sage. Why would they be filing not water to go to Las Vegas, but to irrigate livestock? It's against the law for them they can, Southern Amount of Water Authority, state agencies can buy this ranch right here, take and drill holes in the ground on this private land and take it somewhere else. Make application and do it. But that's for culinary purposes. There's nothing anywhere that the state of Nevada, I, that I know of, are entitled to file on and demand water rights to irrigate livestock. It's not in their purview, especially when you're a water company whose purview is not supposed to be out of Clark County anyhow. I mean, everything about it is the bully pulpit. And that's where the term jack booted thugs come in. And it seems like they kind of wanted the fire to get on their property. That's speculation, but I'm not arguing.